Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Dave Cabellis. I'm a product manager at Oracle. I manage Oracle Verrazano Enterprise Container Platform. It's a new product, um, but I would kind of give you a quick intro here. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about why we created uh, Verrazano. Uh, what we've seen is, you know, we've seen a number of challenges that customers are facing. Uh, we're seeing, you know, huge container adoption and container orchestration uh, technology adoption, and this has been something that's been going on for quite some time, and we see it increasing, not decreasing. Um, you know, why are why are people looking to do that? It's really to get the uh, the the DevOps benefits, right? I'm looking for better uptime. I'm looking for um, better developer productivity. I'm looking for um, you know better reaction times to changes in business needs. So, you know, automation, all of that, you know that comes from DevOps. This is why customers are looking for more container adoption and more automation. Um, and we're seeing that really applied to not only new applications that are being written, but also existing applications. And these applications are typically not written in a way that um, makes it easy to move them to containers, right? Sometimes it's uh, things are very stateful and so forth. So uh, sometimes there's a challenge there. Uh, Multi-cloud demand is a reality now. There, it has been a talking point for a long time, but um, now we're seeing uh, true multi-cloud use cases where you know, customers have the need to run some things on premises, some things um, they can run in public cloud platforms, but they want to use multiple vendors for those public clouds. So they, they end up with you know, um, the need to manage things across you know, at least three different uh, cloud environments. Day two operations, of course, are, are a challenge uh, when, you're, when you've got... Um, distributed applications running in containers, running in, um, you know, in Kubernetes, all of it, it um, there, there are some challenges there. I'm trying to understand, you know, is my application up and running? If it's not, um, you know, what is the real problem with the application? And Kubernetes is great, right? Like we, you know, we're seeing lots of adoption of it. We think it does a lot of great things, uh, but just about everybody adds things to the Kubernetes environment, whether it's, you know, observability or, uh, maybe something for GitOps or, you know, policies around uh, what you can deploy, what you can't deploy. So there's a whole lot that needs to get added around Kubernetes. Um, and, and so our team has been, you know, has been conscious of these issues for quite some time. Uh, we've been delivering solutions, you know, going way back to when uh, it was, you know, Docker and Kubernetes certification. And we built a WebLogic Kubernetes toolkit that enables you to uh, introspect an existing WebLogic domain, create a model out of it, um, um, build a container image with your application archives and that model, and then deploy it into Kubernetes with um, a Kubernetes operator that manages WebLogic, you know, quote unquote, natively within, uh, within the environment. Uh, we, we did something similar with coherence, uh, where again, you want to be able to run coherence clusters natively within Kubernetes. So we provided an operator for that. Um, we also open sourced uh, coherence last year. Uh, the idea here is it's a great state management platform, plus it does so much more, right? If you compare it to Redis, it's, we've got far more um, capabilities built into the, into the product. Uh, we just need to make it available to as many developer teams as possible. And so uh, open sourcing, it makes it that much more accessible. Uh, and if you start to see this as a little bit of a journey now, we're, we're going from focused solely on existing applications to now let's start, you know let's think about new applications. Uh, Oracle released Peladon uh, a couple of years ago. We continue to invest pretty heavily in that. It's a Java framework. Uh, it's micro profile compliant. It's really meant to make it easy to take your existing Java EE skills and move them into uh, into the world of microservice development. Crawl VM um, comes out of Oracle Labs. Crawl VM is a virtual machine that enables you to compile applications down to native code. So that means it's a, you know, a smaller uh, binary to distribute. Uh, it's also, it's smaller to start up. So it tends to start up faster. So uh, pretty nice solution there. So again, you know, we're looking at this as sort of the journey, right? We start with my existing applications and moving into containers. And then, you know, what about the rest of my, my new apps? How do I deal with that? This is where Verrazano comes into play. Like it really kind of picks up and, and goes the last 10 miles here. Um, so this is the product Verrazano Enterprise Container Platform. It provides intelligent workload management across environments. That is, you know, let me take, um, 
uh, my application, say it's a WebLogic application, when I deploy it to a remote cluster, uh, Verizono does the things like um, creating namespaces, copying over secrets. Uh, it deploys the WebLogic operator that's needed. It passes the custom resource to that operator. Um, and then you know, after, after the application is rolled out, it does things like sets up the gateway uh, and the, uh, the Istio uh, ingress controller. Uh, it gets a certificate for the application, gets a service uh, account for the application so that mutual TLS can be enabled. Um, sets up network policies between different application components. Um, it, it updates the Prometheus config map so that Prometheus will then scrape from new applications. Um, and then we also, we have Fluentd deployed throughout the cluster. So we automatically capture uh, the log records from the application, right? So again, it's like, what does this application need? Where does it need to go? And now let me do the heavy lifting, right? Um, application lifecycle management is also uh, a differentiator here. Um, so I'll say, first of all, everything in Verrazano is, is you know, configuration as code. So configuration of Verrazano itself is, is done in code. And then configuration of your application is also in YAML files in code. Um, Verrazano ad adopted open application model as our uh, deployment strategy. Um, the idea behind open application model is to say it's a community driven standard that, um, with the goal to say um, application developers shouldn't need to know where their application is going to run. They should be able to just write the application. And then you have application operators that assemble these components that application developers write and then map them to uh, an environment that you're deploying to. Right? So this notion of let me collect a series of things that might go together, maybe it's multiple web logic domains and a few microservices and maybe a, a coherence cluster, all of this sort of is a unit that needs to be deployed by itself. Now, it doesn't mean that everything has to be updated together. No, in fact, that's one of the, one of the beautiful things here about this world of containers and Kubernetes. Um, when you've got a piece of an application system like this that needs to be updated, you can just update that one piece, right? And, you know, again, a simple YAML file update and, and, uh, and then Kubernetes kind of rolls the rest of it out. Right. So we do run on top of Kubernetes. And so we, we definitely leverage all those pieces. Um, let's keep going here. So automated built-in observability. Uh, as when I talked about the intelligent workload management, um, you know, it's important to note that Verizon ships with an observability stack. Uh, when you install Verizon, it sets up that observability stack. Um, and then as you deploy applications, you know, we wire those applications into the observability stack. And it's fairly pluggable too. Uh, multi-cluster infrastructure management. So we ship with Rancher, uh, which gives you the ability to kind of pull back the covers and take a look at what's going on, going on at the Kubernetes level, Whew. going on at the Kubernetes layer. <laughs> uh, and depending on how you have things, how you have your cluster set up, you can actually use Rancher to manage, um, that's like update scale your clusters. Um, and then of course, multi-level security. So I, I mentioned the Istio service mesh. So from a network security perspective, out of the box, we create an Istio service mesh, and we, you know, by default, we require mutual TLS for all um, for all communication. Um, you can turn that off, of course, and then we we ship with Keycloak, which is an, an open source identity uh, provider. Uh, we use that to protect Verizon components itself. You can also use it to, to protect your application. So this is the uh, this is the platform. Uh, it is a curated platform of open source components. So some of these are familiar components that I've been talking about and I'm sure I've seen before. Um, for all of these components, we, we take the source code, we scan for vulnerabilities, we address those vulnerabilities. Uh, we then uh, build a container image and then that is the container image that would get um, installed with Verrazano. So besides the, um, the open source components that I'm showing here, uh, there are also a number of um, open source components that come from Oracle-led projects that are, uh, you know, operators, admission controllers, and so forth. That really make this whole thing sing, right? They, it makes it really work very well together as a platform. Um, so it's not just a collection of stuff that gets put on disk and you have to figure out what to do with it. No, we do as much of the heavy lifting as possible. Um, it is a platform that's meant to run your traditional applications, think web logic and coherence. Um, it's meant for new Java microservices, um, you know, and pick your pick your favorite framework, Micronaut, Spring Boot, Helidon, um, and then it's also suitable for non 
non-Java uh, microservices as well. This, you know, from our perspective, this has to be a general purpose platform. It can't just be something that uh, is, is just for one type of application. Um, and then of course, this, the platform is spread across multiple Kubernetes clusters. Those clusters can be um, on-premises in a private cloud, can be in Oracle cloud, can be in other um, clouds from, from other vendors. And, and these clusters can be mixed of these, right? So you can have several in, in each of these places and Arizona can manage workloads uh, across those different environments, all as, you know, from a single pane of glass. Uh, quick summary here, right? It's like, you know, why is Verizon important? Enables you to accelerate up development, uh, productivity, and innovation, enables you to modernize your existing applications, and then enables you to realize cloud native benefits without vendor lock-in. Um, so again, cloud neutral approach. Um, the product is available as an annual subscription. Um, it is a, a bundle product that includes this container management platform I've been talking about. It includes Coherence Enterprise Edition, and it includes um, Oracle support for Java frameworks. Uh, and these particular frameworks are Helidon, Micronaut, and Spring Boot. Uh, we also include Verizon in Oracle WebLogic Suite. Uh, I do want to take a quick show you and show you in open source where this is. Um, if you go to GitHub slash Verrazano, this is where all of the different um, open source components are either assembled or, or authored. Right? Um, so there's a, you know, quite a few projects here. Um, and if you go to the main project, we also have a series of examples that you can run. Um, and they're, you know, multiple different types. This uh, um, um, a relatively complex example with WebLogic, Helidon, and Coherence. Um, we have some simple Helidon. We've got a, an industry standard um, uh, example, a Spring Boot example. This is another WebLogic example. So um, lots of good stuff there. You go back to slides. Um, and this is really next steps is, is um, you know, go give it a shot, right? <laughs> you can set it up pretty easily in, uh, if you've got access to a, a regular Kubernetes cluster or you can set up Minikube or Kind. Um, we've got, like I just showed those examples. Uh, there's lots to do there. Um, and you'll see how, just how easy this is. Um, check out our videos, uh, docs, of course, join our Slack channel. So um, we have a public Slack channel uh, where we interact with, with the world. Um, Happy, we have you know people monitoring that Slack channel all the time. So, uh, we'd love to hear from you, and of course, follow us on Twitter. All right, that's it for now. Thanks very much.